This is the most important nesting beach for diamondback terrapins in Alabama. And as you can see right offshore, you see two booms, one about 10 yards off. Along Dolphin Island's Cedar Point Marsh, UAB biologists are using video and other methods to document the persistent threat and growing impact of the Gulf oil spill on the struggling population of Alabama diamondback terrapin turtles. A huge variety of both vertebrate and invertebrate life that live in these dense seagrass beds. Further east, more UAB work to document the thriving and diverse species that live among the seagrasses of Cape Sandblast in Florida's St. Joseph's Peninsula State Park. So we were looking at population density in the seagrass beds. We were looking at the size di distribution in the seagrass beds to uh, see how those may change if the population crashes or if there's any change in the uh, environment due to the oil coming in. Mickey Powell is a research assistant professor in the UAB lab run by Professor Stephen Watts. For 20 years, Watts and his team have studied sea urchins and other life in Cape Sandblast. That oil is going to be filtered out in the seagrass and become toxic to these animals. So we're looking at the potential to lose this huge, rich diversity in these dense seagrass beds. The UAB team's concern is high, as just a single oil boom is protecting the creatures that have been their life's work. We were told that if the oil slick gets within 10 miles of the inlet, to this bay area, they will pull the boom across. But currently, that's the only protective measure that they're planning on taking, is to pull the boom across the inlet to try to keep the uh, oil from coming in. Back along the Alabama coast, in Gulf Shores, other strategies are being used to protect the rich marshes and bays. A photograph shows Watts during a recent trip to the coast at the mouth of the Little Lagoon, where a sandbar was built to seal the bay just as the oil began to find its way to shore. It went on and closed off the little lagoon. I thought that was a very smart thing to do because now they have closed off this area, this region, uh, where now those fish and, and other uh, animals will be safe. But beyond booms and sandbars, Watts believes the resilience of coastal residents could be the most powerful tool to combat the oil spill's terrible impact. There was a lot of optimism that they would get through this, they would get over it, and then they'll go back to business as usual.